All right, I'm going to go a little bit, um, talking a little bit about how to host with Dropbox, Drive, and Geo. Um, I'm not going to go through, let's see. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm not going to go through the first part of this example. Um, because the first part of this example is about, um, I mean, the first part of this example is about hosting on Dropbox, and it's very easy. Um, it's, I will just talk you through it, but we're not going to actually do it right now. So um, if you have Dropbox uh, or anything else or Google Drive or whatever, you can very easily share results with your collaborators. And the way you would do this is just upload your files to um, your Dropbox folder. Um, we've done this over here. So we have this, this is from the 2019 workshop, but we also works for the 2020 workshop. We have this file here, and then you would just right click on it and you would copy the link address. So you can, you know, copy the link. And then in this case, we showed you um, for this particular example, this is the link that was created. And then you just load it as a URL. So you can either do it in Juicebox Desktop. That's just giving you a little pointer that you can also load this into Juicebox Desktop. Um, but in Juicebox on the web, you can do a load map. Now let's see which one I'm going to do. I think I'll just do a new Juicebox, a new Juicebox tab. Uh oh. Let's do that. You can do load map. URL, enter the URL, and it's going to load the map. And so that's just a map that I have on, on stored on Dropbox. And here we are looking at it in Juicebox. You didn't need to download it. It's, I don't know how big it is. I don't know how big it is. What does it say? Hmm. If I click on it says that it's almost a gig. So maybe you don't want to load a file that's almost a gig down to your computer. So you don't have to. You can just explore it in a streaming way. All right. So a couple of things about that. So that's very convenient, obviously. And you can also load a map from a local file or a track from a local file. If I clicked load map local file, it's going to bring up, I mean, I can do it very quickly. I'll do it all the tracks, local file. It's going to bring up my like drop it, my, uh, my folder, my downloads folder, and you're going to get to see what files I've downloaded recently. Um, so you can load it, like say you found a track on, I don't know, um, I don't know, you, say your friend created a, a track for you and so he emailed it to you and you decided that you're going to load it from on your local file. That's all very good and well. But then if you want to click share and share that link again and paste that to them, they're not going to be able to load. Like they're not going to see that track because it's a local file. So they don't actually have access to it. So we do encourage you, if you are wanting to share things, just put them into a Dropbox or put them into, um, if you have a file server that you that you prefer to use that's password protected, that sort of thing. I mean, we have our own running version of Juicebox that's password protected that we use for for looking at files um, that um, that are that are just stored on our own server. So you can do that. You can do your own private server. You can do a Dropbox. Have that also be password protected, and have those and have those links available. Um, so that's a way to get around the the sharing issue. Otherwise, there's just I mean. Sort of, it's sort of obvious from a computer scientist perspective that if you have loaded a local file, there's no way to actually share that because the file is pointing to a file that's on your machine and you can't share that. So the other thing I wanted to sh show you guys is that you can load files from Geo. So scrolling down to loading files from Geo, you see this link here, which is this Geo GSE 1044. So click that link and you see the Geo extension viewer. Now, it's not always the case, but more and more, it seems to be the case that, you know, people obviously on Geo and on SRA, they upload their um, ASCII files, their, their sequencing data, but because it's for the sequencing read archive and all that, but also people are uploading their processed files. And so sometimes those are BAMs, sometimes those are 
you know, bed files or wig files, big wig files. Um, for HiC experiments, it's the HiC files. And so you can actually load these HiC files directly from Geo. And the way to do that would be, for example, I'll just take this first one. You have to do the FTP link because the HTTP link is coded in kind of a weird way. But if you just right click the FTP link, you click copy link address, copy link location if you're on um, a Windows machine. And then again, uh, go back to you know whatever juice box instance you have open. You click load map. Again, it's just a URL, so you click URL, and you can just paste the URL, and it's going to load it directly from Geo. Again, you don't need to download the file. It's it's right there. Um, and here you go. Here's what you see. So. Um, that's the explanation of how that works. And I'm going to go on to uh, visualize it from directly from encode unless there are any questions.